Right, let's give this a go. Okay, well that just works. This might be a very short video. So I'm sure you're all aware of the six stages of debugging. It is a journey that we all have to take at some point in our lives. Somebody reports a bug. Our initial reaction is denial. It must be user error. It's something weird they are doing. We definitely tested our code before we shipped it, and we definitely tested the functionality they are complaining about. They must be mistaken. The next stage is more denial. Maybe they aren't making it up, but we've never seen the bug, and we can't recreate it. It's the classic, it works on my machine. Finally, we have some acceptance. The bug is real. We've managed to recreate it, but it's definitely not supposed to happen. The code is not supposed to behave in the way we are seeing. There is something wrong with the universe. Now we're in the fun part. Why is the code behaving in this way? It's certainly not behaving in the way we intended. We need to do some debugging. Hopefully, after we've done some debugging, we have the moment of revelation. The bug is laid bare, and the problem in the code is obvious. And then we face the horrible truth. The code is obviously completely broken. How on earth did it ever work? Our big challenge is getting from this stage, why does that happen, to the stage where we know why it's happening, without doing lots of work. What are our options? This is something that anybody using the Arduino framework will be aware of. Our two friends, Printline and Printf. This is commonly known as Printf debugging. You start to add lots of logging to your code. It starts off fairly tame. We have a few here one, here two, and other things like that, but it gets increasingly desperate. Should not be here. Why the beep are we here? It gets increasingly frustrating as the code just doesn't behave in the way you expect. And I'm sure you've all written some variation of these print statements. The other alternative is flashing lights. We can add some LEDs to the mix. You hook them up to some GPIO pins and you can flash them when the code does certain things. If you're really lucky, you might even have access to a signal analyzer. These are great and can do all sorts of clever things like decode I2C, SPI and other protocols. Really handy if you have one. If you're doing Arduino development, then you might be thinking, that's it. We've got printf debugging and we've got wiggling GPIO pins. That's all we've got to work with. But there is another way. Now I'm using my super simple dev board that I made in a previous video. Check out our link in the top right somewhere. The boards were made by PCBWay and they came out really nicely. I'm using an ESP32 S3 on these boards. And one of the very nice things about these modules is that they have built in support for USB. What's really, really nice is that they support debugging over USB. You can see here that they show up as a USB JTAG serial debug unit. This is really neat. It means that we can just hit the debug button in the Arduino IDE and debug our code. For people who prefer platform IO, it also works there. Let's give it a proper go in the Arduino IDE and see what's possible. So we're in the Arduino IDE. Now I've got a really simple sketch here. We have some LEDs hooked up to our ESP32 and I've just done the fizzbuzz code. So fizzbuzz, if it's divisible by three, then it's fizz, divisible by five, buzz, Divisible by both, fizzbuzz. So let's debug this code. So it's really simple. We can put breakpoints into our code just by clicking here in the margin. So I've clicked here. We now have this red dot. So there's a breakpoint here. Now when I start debugging, it will break on this. Now there is a built-in breakpoint on setup. So if I hit start debugging, you'll see this run. And we've stopped in the setup code. Now you can step over. So we can hit the step over button and we'll step through the code or you can just hit continue. So now we're down at our breakpoint in loop. Now, if we look in our variables, you can see locally we have count equals one. Now you can also add watches. This is quite powerful. You can add expressions. So we can see here we have our if statements. So what I can do is add expressions for each of these if statements. So I can do count percentage 15. You can see the value of that. Count percentage five. And we can do count percentage three. So we can see which of our if statements should actually be true. So at the moment, because count is one, none of them will be true. So if we step through, you can see that none of our if statements will actually be hit. So we run through the loop. And we just hit continue, come back round to our breakpoint. Now count is two. Obviously, 
be quite tedious to step through this until one of these is met. So what you can do is make your breakpoints conditional. So we can edit this breakpoint. And what we can do, we can add an expression. So let's just say we want to break when count is equal to 15. So let's just do count equals 15. So now our breakpoint is a conditional breakpoint. So now when I hit continue, the code will run until count equals 15. So now count is 15. So what should happen is we hit the fizzbuzz and if statement. So if we just step through, we now have fizzbuzz true and the fizzbuzz LED will turn on. Now the other powerful things you can do, we've done conditional breakpoints, you can just go in and edit values. So let's, um, let's change this breakpoint so it's no longer conditional. So I'll just remove it and re-add it and we'll run and obviously count is 16. What we can do, we can just go in and change this value. Let's put it back to 15 again so that fizzbuzz is still true. So it's really powerful, these debuggers, definitely worth having a play, and it really helps you debug your code. There's obviously some limitations here. If you're doing anything real time, it's going to be quite tricky. Or if you're doing kind of interrupt handlers, you probably don't want breakpoints on your interrupt handlers. But for general debugging, absolutely fantastic. Give it a go. It works on all the ESP32 devices that have built-in USB support. So really handy. It just works out of the box.